Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 281 and today is our lesson number 86. Please turn to page number 281. It is the very first problem on the top of the page, number 69 is what we are going to do. Problem number 69. Here we are given four points. Q, R, S and T. And the question simply is, is R the closest to zero? That's all they are asking. They are just simply asking if among these four numbers that they are showing us, of the four numbers represented on the number line, so it is a number line, they are telling us it's number line, which means the ones to the left obviously are smaller than one to the right. You, you understand that? And the question simply is, among these four numbers that are given to us, is R the one that is closest to zero? Let's see what they tell us. In statement 1, they tell us that Q equals negative S. Now, what does that mean, Q equals negative S? What do you surmise from that? What do you gather from that? What do you infer from that? Q is equal to negative S is the same as saying negative Q is equal to S, obviously. It's the same thing. For example, for example, here is your negative 5 and here is your positive 5. So, if this is T, uh, sorry, if this is S, if this is S, then this is your Q. As you can see, Q equals negative S or S equals negative Q. What that means, what this implies, what this tells us is that the midpoint of Q and S is zero. That's what they're telling us. The zero lies right smack in the middle. Now we are, we are, we are interested in where R lies. First of all, let me put this in the, in the middle of zero, because, in the middle, because it doesn't quite look like a middle to me. We are interested in R. Question is, is R the one that is closest to 0? We are not interested in T. Besides, T plays, in this, in this story, T is not going to play any role at all. Where T is, is a mood point. Why is it a mood point? Because T is to the left of S. So, S is already closer to 0 as we can clearly see. S is already closer to 0. So, T is not even one of the contenders. It is a mood point as to where T is. We are only interested in finding out where R is in relation to Q and S, to which the answer would be, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where R is. Only thing that matters is the fact that R is somewhere between Q and S. On the number line, we are shown that R is somewhere in between. So it doesn't matter whether R happens to be here, or whether R happens to be here, or here, or here, or here. It doesn't matter. No matter where it falls, where it falls between negative 5 and positive 5, the negative 5 and positive 5 is something that we just made up. We make up numbers to, so, so that it's easier for you to see. It doesn't matter where it falls. It is the one that is going to be the closest to 0. As we can clearly see, no matter which point you take here, this point is closer to 0 than Q is, and it, obviously. It doesn't matter whether, it, whether it's this distance, or whether it's this distance, or is this distance, or is this distance. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm being silly now. They're all smaller than the distance from 0 to Q, or from 0 to S which of course is the same as saying distance from 0 to Q because 0 to Q, Q and S, what this tells us, what this tells us is Q and S, what this implies is that Q and S are equidistant from 0. That's how we say it. That's how we speak. Q and S are equidistant from 0. In other words, the distance from 0 to Q and 0 to S is the same, which, in the, which is why 0 is in the middle. And S is somewhere in between. So, oh, sorry, R is somewhere in between. Therefore, R is going to be the one that is going to be closest to 0. The first statement enables us to answer the question. The question was, is R closest to 0? To which the answer turns out to be yes. Now, as I always remind you, the point here is not that the answer turned out to be yes. The point is, we are able to say either an affirmative or negative. If the, if the answer had turned out to be no, no, R is not the one that is closest to zero, 
we wouldn't have cared about it. We wouldn't have cried about it. We have, we have no sentimental orange. We have no sentimental attachment to R at all. We really don't care where, where, where R falls. The point is we are able to tell that regardless of where it is, it is the one that is going to be closest to zero. The first statement by itself is enough. A, A, D, B, C, E. Since the first statement by itself is enough, therefore the answer can have be B, C, or E. It has to be either A or a D. Let's look at second statement, shall we? Let's look at second statement. Oh, I erased that word. Let's learn that word, shall we? Mood point. Oh, yeah, yeah. I left my vocabulary listing uh, thingamabobber. That's a vocabulary word, thingamabobber. In the other room, if you excuse me for 15 seconds, I used to say 5 seconds or 10 seconds. I measured it, it takes me 15 seconds. Excuse me, I'll be right back and I'll tell you the day when we learn the word mood, if you're interested in, in expanding your vocabulary, okay? In the meantime, I'm going to set up the second second statement, and why don't you see if you can analyze it a little bit. Second statement tells us that negative p is less than q. What I want you to do is draw a line and locate somehow, make up numbers, make up numbers here, and see what happens, okay? I'll be back in 15 seconds. It's always a good idea to make up numbers so that so that we can look at it in concrete term in a numerical value instead of having to ex instead of having to analyze this thing in abstract terms. Do you understand? I'll be right back. The word was the word was mood point. Mood. M O O T. I'm gonna leave it up to you to watch the video and learn it properly. It was on Day number seven. If you just type in my name, Keshwani, and then vocabulary day seven, just type in vocabulary day seven, you will see a video in which you will learn this word along with some other useful and good words to help you expand your vocabulary. Having good vocabulary is a must, and not just for this exam, but for life in general. <coughs> anyway, enough said. So let's make up a number. Let's make up a number. Negative t is less than 10. If t happened to be 10, if t happened to be 10, and if q happened to be negative 7, that would do the job because if q happened, if t happened to be 10, then negative t would be negative 10, which of course is less than negative 7. Let's put negative 7 here. And that's our and that's our t. Uh, that's our q. So that's what this tells us. It tells us that Q is negative 7, T is positive 10. It doesn't tell us that. We're just plugging in numbers. And therefore, somewhere here is a 0. The question is, does that tell us anything at all about point R? The answer is no. It makes no mention whatsoever as to the location of point R. <coughs> there is no way of telling where R is. R could be as far away as this this point right here, in which case Q would be closer to it, or R could be as close as here, or for all we know, R could be right right on zero. We can't really tell. I'm going to show you a couple of scenarios. I'm going to show you a couple of scenarios. We have Q and S. Q and S. For example, for example, <coughs> here's the or rather, rather R and S. <coughs> Excuse me. For example, R and S could be such that these two distances are equal. In which case, both R and S, the way I'm showing here, in that case, both R and S are going to be equidistant. So it'll be it'll be difficult to answer the question: Is R closest to zero? Well, in this case, the answer is no. There are two numbers which are which are at the same distance from zero. That's one scenario. Another scenario is that. Another scenario is that. There's your R again. There is our S, 
and 0 could be anywhere because this is negative 7. We have no way of knowing here. 0 could be here, in which case r will be the one that is closer, or 0 could be here or here. You get the idea. I'm, I'm, sp I'm explaining way too much. It's not enough. We didn't, even, we didn't even have to introduce the complication of s here. The point is, because we do not know here, here's the point. I'm going to make it very simple. I'm going to make it very simple. This is negative 7, this is part is 7, somewhere here is a 0. And the point is, we, had, we don't know where the hell r is. r could be here, or r could be as far as that. We really can't tell if r is the one that is closest to 0. Do you understand? Now if you look in the back, they, 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 in, the, in the back of the book, they have a tendency of explaining, uh, giving you very academic, very esoteric explanation as to what's going on there. It's not necessary, just keep it simple. You don't have the time in the exam to analyze in the same manner that they are giving you the explanation in the back of the book. Nobody does that. You, you're not going to have the time. You have to keep it simple. You have to keep it logical. Logic, simple rationale, simple logic tells me that because we do not know where R is, then how can we tell if R is the one that's closer to zero? It may be the S that is closer. The S might be here and R might be here. Or the other way around, R might be here. And S might be way over here. We really can't tell. Second statement does not do the job. Because the second statement by itself does not do the job, the answer is A. The answer is A. Listen, I was about to start a second problem, another problem, but I need to get a cup of tea. My throat is hurting. So, <coughs> I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.